Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan with a quick tutorial on simple color correction with Mocha VR and Premiere Pro. Today we're going to be looking at bumping the shadows and highlights for the car and floor spot in this echo rectangular shot from Spice VR. Here we can see that the car and the spot split over the VR scene and they also have all that lovely warp that you get from working with VR footage in general. So we're going to use Mocha VR to help us track and roto out the car and floor spot, and then we're going to use the inbuilt Premiere Pro color tools to clean up the shadows and highlights for the floor area. So nothing fancy, but it will get you started working with Premiere Pro and the Mocha VR workflow. So the first thing we're going to do is go up to our effects panel inside Premiere Pro, Go to the Mocha by Imagineer Systems folder and choose the Mocha VR effect. So we'll just drag that onto our clip and go over to our effect controls where the Mocha VR plugin is sitting right here. So we can of course go down to the module renders and actually render a lens distort right off the bat and we can play around with that and look at our different views or look at the top and the bottom view right here in the lens render view, but we want to go into the Mocha GUI to do some tracking and roto. So I'm going to turn off my render and go inside the large friendly button of Mocha up the top here. So let's click on that. And this loads the Mocha VR interface, all ready to work in 360 mode. Right, so some quick navigation tips off the bat. We've got our 360 button up here, which turns us into our 360 view. And you can also toggle using Shift and O. You can also load up any view in here that you like, or just navigate using the standard X tool for pan. So we can pan around here. We can see the car that we're going to work on and so on and so forth, just using that pan tool. We can also use the zoom tool to zoom in and out. And for those, I'm just using X for pan and Z for zoom, but obviously you can customize to whatever you like. So I'm going to pan around to the car and the spot that we want to work on. And we do recommend working in 360 mode. You can work in the flattened out echo rectangular view, but it is much easier to work in this view because it feels a lot more natural and you can navigate around to make sure your tracking and roto is looking nice. Here, it's a little bit harder to see how that's going. I mean, obviously you can zoom in and look like that, but here we've got a nice flat view and we know what it's going to look like ultimately in the headset. So we're going to start by tracking the car to get the overall camera motion. Now one thing to note, because we're using a planar tracker, this car is not planar, it's got a lot of different bits and bobs all over it, so we're going to do an overall track to get the overall motion of the camera, and then we're going to do a separate layer that's linked to the track, so that we can then refine the rotor a little bit. So let's start by drawing a shape around the car. Just a nice simple one like that. If we want to make it a little bit easier, we could probably just track the side of the car where it matters, just around here. And I'm going to turn off my surface. My surface doesn't really matter too much when you're doing roto because the surface is really to check how your tracking is going. And in this particular case, because we're just doing a simple garbage mask for tracking purposes to help roto out, we don't need to see how the track is going. So I'm going to turn off those layers. And we're just going to look at the mat for now. So let's just put that around the base of those wheels. And we'll just get the general side of the plane of that car. So now we can just start tracking forwards. And this is going to capture the overall motion. Now one interesting thing you'll notice here is there's a little bit of a wobble going on here around the stitch for this VR footage. And you can actually see that the tracker is taking that wobble into account. This means that it's going to be a lot more accurate when we come to do the refined roto for the edges of the car. And this is great, so we're getting all that subtle motion that's happening in the raw footage, so it's going to look a lot more natural when we do the roto. So I'm going to speed up the recording and you can see the rest blaze through so you don't have to sit through a boring track, and we'll come back and keep going at the end.
Okay, so our track is done, and you can see that it's not perfect, and the reason for that is because we do have quite a distinctive set of planes between here and here. If we wanted to get super fancy, we could actually track the wheel separately, and then the body, and then the other wheel, just to have a few separate shapes. But for here, I'm going to just refine that in the overall roto motion. So we've got our track. I'm going to call this one just car track. And I'm actually going to just turn that off now, because I don't need to see it anymore. Now I'm going to go back to the... Let's actually start at the end. We're going to start at the end of this shot here. And we're going to start doing a more refined roto. So I'm going to draw some shapes around the wheels of the car. Underneath the carriage here. And around the little step plate here. And around the other wheel and around the mudguard here and basically all we're doing is getting an overall shape up here i don't care too much about the steering wheel because it doesn't cover the floor and we're only interested in doing color correction on the floor today just like so so let's just turn on our mat for that so we can see so we've got our general shape for that let's just smooth that out i'm just right clicking the tangent handles for this and we can see now that that's looking nice around there. There's a nice sharp shape here, so I'm going to square that out again. So I just again pulling on that handle to make it tight corner. And we'll just keep on refining until we're happy. So that'll do for now. So once we've got our shape, what we want to do is then link it back to the original track so we can keep on refining the roto. So to do that, we come down to link to track and go to car track. And now you can see this line has turned blue. And if we scrub through the timeline, we're seeing that Roto is now linked to that track. So I'm going to call this one Car Mask. So now we have a car mask for our car. And we're going to do a little bit more refining on this Roto so that it fits through the rest of the shot. So at the moment, we're only using one keyframe. And I'm going to come all the way back to the beginning, and you can see that it's a little bit off here. If we just turn off our little paint bucket icon up here, we can see the cutout a little better. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so we can have a look. Now, keep in mind that when you're in 360 mode, zooming in is not actually zooming. It's actually changing the field of view. So you see, if you see some distortion, that's why. We're actually physically changing the field of view while we're working here. So I'm going to go and modify now the Roto to fit a little bit better with that view. Basically what we're trying to do is cover up the mask around the wheels so that it's not touching any of our floor because that's the bit we care about in this particular instance. Let's just turn off that mask in there for a second so we can see that a bit better. And we'll move this out here so that we're covering up the mud guard just like so. And we're doing pretty well there. We're going to move this out a little bit here and the same for up here. So we're still doing pretty well at covering that area. We've got this mud guard down here as well that we need to fix. So let's just pull that out. I'm going to sharpen that corner. And you can see now I've generated a second keyframe, one at the beginning and one at the end. We may need to do a little bit more refinement here. Let's just sharpen that one up. And so on and so forth. like so. So now when we scrub through the timeline, we can see that we've got the overall motion. So now again, I'm going to speed up the track and just refine the rest of the roto as I see fit, and then we'll come back and do the floor. Okay, so that will do for our purposes. We can see here we've made about three or four keyframes just to help refine that roto a little bit, and that's going to help us now mask out the color correction for the floor that we want to do for the shadows and highlights. Now, there's one important thing that we haven't shown yet with the roto and tracking in 360 mode. At the moment, you've been doing all of your work inside the 360 mode, and it's made it a lot more natural to do our shapes. But if we come out of 360 mode, you're going to see that it's correctly reprojected to our flattened echo rectangular mode as well. So if I scrub through the timeline, you're going to see that car go off the screen here. 
and actually generate a new shape on the other side of our shot. So this is really important because it means that when we generate the mat back in Premiere, it's going to correctly split across the scene. We can even export our shape data to Premiere Shapes and that will generate the correct splines so that when we do our color correction, it's nice and speedy. But we're not done yet because we still have to do our circle shape so we can do the color correction for the floor. So I'm gonna go back into my 360 mode and we're going to start looking at that now. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And again, when we're zooming inside 360 mode, we're actually changing the field of view. And we're going to take a look at this floor here. Now, this is quite a difficult floor. We've got a lot of shiny highlights and reflections in there. So I'm going to try and grab as much texture detail as I can using the available floor that we've got. So we're going to draw a nice big shape around this area here just like so and i'm going to accommodate this little plaque that's over here i'm going to try and avoid this highlight here if i can let's just move those out from there to there because highlights tend to stay in one place when you're tracking so we're going to keep away from those if possible and more importantly i'm going to bring it below my car mask the reason we bring it below the car mask it means that now when i look at the selected track mat it's going to actually be cutting out our shape from the mask that we've done. And this saves us a lot of time because it means that we don't have to avoid the overall shape here. It's just telling it to ignore this entire car mask here. So let's just go ahead and start tracking. Now, in this case, I will just turn on my perspective grid here. I'm just going to put that in the general perspective of where that's thing so we can see how the track is going. And I'm going to just drag this out a little bit further. Again, because we're all of this floor is one big plane, I'm actually trying to A, avoid big highlights, and B, grab as much texture as possible. So there's some nice marble texture over here. There's a bit over here too, so I'm just going to expand out that shape. Here I'm just using the add point to spline tool. So we've got a nice big shape now, and we've got our tracking turned off for the car mask and the car track because we don't want to track those again. And we'll call this one floor track. I had my caps lock on there, but that makes it nice and large, so we'll just keep it that way. So let's go ahead and track. Now, you can see here that I've actually started in the middle, which is perfect because we can just track backwards or forwards from this point. So I'm gonna start tracking backwards. So now, while it's tracking, it's actually going to be ignoring the overall motion of the car and it's going to be grabbing the overall motion of the floor. So once again, as we did before, we're going to speed up this track so you can see it in super fast motion so you don't have to sit through a track and then we'll come back when we're done. Okay, so we've got the overall track for this side, and so I've gone back to the keyframe where I drew the shape, and I'm just going to start tracking forwards, and so we'll speed that up again. Okay, so now we have our completed floor track, we can use this to drive some floor roto. So I'm going to turn off my tracking code, so I don't accidentally track it again, and I'm going to turn off the visibility of the floor track, and now we can go ahead and draw some new roto. Let's just get rid of our grid and our surface as well so we don't see those when we draw a new layer. So let's just come to back to the middle of that shot where we did the tracking keyframe because this is a nice position to draw our shape. And we can now go ahead and draw a circle that we can link back to the floor track. Okay, so we're going to go up to the x tool again and I'm going to draw a basic shape. So let's come around here and we'll draw all of our... 